best practices. We'll be looking at other best practices, including validation and some considerations for site speed. Another SEO and overall website best practice I want to cover is just the idea of site speed and how fast your site is performing versus other sites. You can test this with a variety of tools. My favorite is probably gtmetrics.org. Very simple, easy, straightforward tool. Google Page Speed, Yahoo, YSlow, and Firebug combine in, in some of the browsers as add-ons. And there's plenty of other ways to test your page and site speed. But it's a very important and fundamental issue for any website to increase its speed. There's been lots of studies done to say that as you increase the page load time, page abandonment increases exponentially. I've even seen studies while I was doing this research that said adding one second at a certain point in this time scale here could impact as much as 7% in abandonment. So your site needs to be fast. Lots of studies done on how page load time impacts page abandonment. And you don't want people leaving your site. You want them staying there. You want a fast experience. And you need to test that in order to make sure that that's the case. You need to make sure that you have a fast web host and that your pages are loading appropriately. And while this isn't a direct SEO issue, that bounce rate can eventually impact your quality scores with Google. And the more people are clicking that back button to go back to the search results after they've clicked on your site because they're tired of waiting, the more that your site's not going to perform well in the search results. It's going to be a negative signal to Google that, hey, this page is slow and people don't want to see it. So they're clicking back. So in order to test this, we're going to look at GT Metrics. It's going to give us some, some information like this, and I'm not going to go through each of these uh, areas in detail, but it is important to make sure that you're only calling your CSS once to specifying image dimensions, improves the speed by not waiting and forcing the browser to wait to load that image, uh, parsing the JavaScript at the end of the file loading instead of at the beginning can have an impact. And there's lots of other things that can have an impact. But most importantly, the size of your images and the speed of your server and the speed of that page is going to impact your overall speed. We can go into a lot of detail here, but just test your website. Make sure that it's doing well. This is an example of Google page speed. And if you look at this on Google's version of optimizing your site for site speed, they'll give you some suggestions on browser caching, on optimizing your image, on eliminating redundant CSS and JavaScript. And the main ideas here that we want to get across, and these are best practices for SEO, is keep your CSS global. Make sure it's externalized. It's the way to say that is is that you're calling it from an external file that is not within that HTML or PHP kind of file. Don't have local CSS to style your fonts and your headings and everything else. Make sure you're doing that from an external file. Search engines are going to search from top to bottom on the page, so that's where that idea of keyword proximity comes in. So make sure that you have your important content at the top and that you're styling it with your CSS. And stay away from tables unless it's actually tabular data. Tables were used more often in the past for design. Now it's not as common of a problem, but don't use tables unless you have tabular data. With JavaScript, a few words of notes. Most robots have a hard time with JavaScript or Ajax. They stay away from it or include options for the search engines to see that content. That includes a text version rather than just JavaScript. Any links surrounded by JavaScript, at this point they do pretty well with, but when in doubt, make sure you're calling JavaScript from external include files. That's the most important thing with JavaScript. And make sure and test to see if Google is actually getting content that is within your JavaScript and come up with alternate ways to deliver that content to the search spider if you're storing large chunks of data within Ajax or JavaScript. A few other just random best practices to cover with 404 pages. Never have more than one 404 page indexed. It should always be yoursite.com slash 404 .php or HTML, and be consistent with just a single 404 page. Make sure you're customizing it so that it's search friendly for search engines and humans. The good thing to put on a 404 page is a sitemap and a search feature and an apology that they got lost on your site or that you broke something. And then maybe even an email or contact form that contacts direct to the webmaster to notify them of a potential problem. These are the three or four things that you really want on your 404 page. You can find your 404s your error response codes, 
with Screaming Frog or doing a search spider index of your website. Another issue that often comes up with regards to SEO best practices is whether you need to validate your site with something like the W3C. It is a good standard and it's a best practice to have your site validate. It can often be tricky and time consuming. Most sites have some errors. There's no direct SEO benefit for having your site validate, but there is speed benefits. It helps to make sure that your site's faster and rendering correctly and that it's also accessible to everyone. So these are the two important factors with W3C validation. You can test your site with the W3C validator or with what's called a Lynx browser, which is a text-only version of the browser to make sure that your alt tags and all the other standards are compatible and showing up appropriately and that you're passing that validation. There's no direct benefit in validation for SEO, but there's some indirect benefits with regards to speed and just having a quality website that's highly accessible. For government websites, it is important that you are Section 508 compliant. Section 508 is the government standard assuring accessibility to web pages using alt tags and descriptive labels. So mainly you need to know that you have alt tags in there and that if you're government related and companies with government contracts you need to be 508 compliant again no direct seo benefit but it is a good best practice for your website for accessibility we covered a lot of material in our seo fundamentals and best practices including all of the information for other dimension optimization we looked at duplicate content issues what the problems are and how to fix those with robots.txt, 301 redirects, and rel no follow. We looked at some ideas for standards and validation and how they may or may not impact SEO. And we looked at how to improve the speed of your site and how to test the speed of your site to make sure that you have a lower page abandonment rate. Within the other dimension, there's some takeaways. Make sure that you're spending the time understanding those fundamental on-page best practices that we've covered that you're using 301 redirects for moving pages and preserving link equity, that you understand the hurdles to indexation and why crawl cycles are so important to getting your site indexed and ranking effectively, that you're writing your titles based on your keyword research and organizing it into logical subdivisions when you write and create your content, that it's within a category, subcategory structure that's logical, that you're blocking and de-indexing that duplicate content and putting it in those categories where you can just block it with robots.txt or a no index. And you're making sure that you're not trying to move your entire site without some planning, that you don't have broken links on your site, that you're spidering it with something like Screaming Frog and finding those 404s, that you're not using Flash JavaScript to display important text that you want the search engines to read, that the content accessible through forms and other elements that require human action are duplicated or that the search engines can get to those and that they are indexable and that you're not allowing content that shouldn't be indexed to get into Google search engine index. And finally, and most importantly, that you're abiding by the Google guidelines and not trying to stuff keywords or manipulate links or rankings in any fashion. In our entire series, we looked at a lot of different things, including the 20 signals of an optimized web page, which I encourage you to go back and review now that you have a better idea and understanding of the page dimension, domain dimension, and keyword and other dimension factors associated with the SEO fundamentals and best practices.